Yo, look, uh, off the rip, dog. I'm so excited to be here talking about college football on a Wednesday as we head into week two. We've got some really cool things in store for you. We're going to talk about Dabo Sweeney and the doubts and how there's a drive-by trucker song that really does get to the heart of who Dabo Sweeney is. We're going to talk a little bit about DJ Lagway, who's probably going to get his first start of his collegiate career against Sanford, Ben Sanford. It's not a bad campus to be on. We're going to talk about Oregon. And can they stop Janty getting jiggy with it? And I want to talk a little bit more about Davis Warren and the road that he has been on, quite frankly, to be the starter at Michigan. But let's start with the news, man. The news is that DJ Lagway is probably going to get his first start as a quarterback at all in college against the Sanford Bulldogs. And I'm, I thought this was always going to happen. And I remember Billy Napier getting up at SEC Media Days and telling all of us who would deign to somehow believe that DJ Lagway was going to be the starter, that Graham Mertz is the reason that we get to have a great football program in 2024. And I'm like, Graham Mertz? Overland Park Graham Mertz? The Graham Mertz that went to Wisconsin and got shoved off? Do you know how hard it is to get shoved off the starting quarterback in Wisconsin where you've got to exist between the snap and handing whoever the bell cow back in Wisconsin is the ball? That's just, that's not what I expected. It's simply, simply not what I expected. And then, in the first game of the season, we get to see why Graham Mertz is not the guy for Florida. And now he's in with per- concussion protocol, so he can't play against Sanford, so you got to go with D.J. Lagway. But this was the best player out of the state of Texas. This is one of the top quarterbacks of the 2024 class. This was the 2023 National Gatorade Player of the Year. I don't really understand how we're not at a spot where we expect to see D.J. Lagway absolutely positively making it happen. But here we are. We're going to see him start. We're going to see him get after it. We're going to see if, what, how he can actually get their passing game going. He provided some juice against Miami, but all the talk about Miami was coming from Cam Ward's side of the field, 385, 26 to 35. Got a really great conversation with Quincy Avery, who's the founder of QB Takeover. He's worked with quarterbacks Josh Dobbs, Jalen Hurts, Sarah Taylor, Deshaun Watson. On it goes with guys that he has helped become better at their craft. Some of these guys that he had been coaching since they were teenagers all the way up to being pros. Very excited about that conversation. Looking forward to giving that to you. But uh, the thing that actually got me down to talking about this is Colorado. Colorado. They got Nebraska. I don't know if you heard. They got Nebraska this weekend. Because they got Nebraska this weekend, we got to take a look at the hype around Colorado once again because it is a team that is 1-0. They're undefeated, just like Nebraska. They beat North Dakota State at home, and they pulled numbers. Was it $7 million that I thought it was going to be? No. No, not even a little bit. It was the $5.6 million on a Thursday night. That is an ESPN record for a Thursday night game, especially for an opener. It's ridiculous, man. Uh, we all love to watch that football team play, and there's a lot of reasons as to why. At the top of the list is Coach Prime, right, who is Coach Prime at Jackson State, going undefeated in regular season, winning a SWAC championship, falling just short of the Black College Football National Championship both times but had been box office at Jackson State. And as hard as last year was for him and as hard as this season will be for him, I'm curious to find out just who thinks that this 2024 season is hard because I'm trying to tell y'all, this man coached Jackson State during a water crisis. They could not get water in the city of Jackson that was drinkable, and yet he was coaching football and they were winning games. Remarkable what he was able to do over there, but that ain't the same sort of magic that you need at Colorado. You, you need stronger magic. Your magic is weak right now at Colorado, okay? I mean, it's, it's Black Adam off in here talking about, hey, look, you're going to need more than this because, frankly, you're going from the Pac-12 to the Big 12. And as much as people want to say that the Big 12 is not what the Pac-12 was, it's still tough. It's Utah. It's Oklahoma State. It's Kansas State. It's Kansas. It's Iowa State. We can keep going on here. There are no easy wins in this conference this year. Everybody can get you. And they ain't even started conference play. And they're going to get a little bit of taste of what their conference play is going to look like with Nebraska this weekend because Nebraska feels some kind of way about Colorado coming to Lincoln this weekend. A, they got embarrassed by Colorado last year at Folsom. B, they got a five-star quarterback that they think can absolutely sling it at Nebraska right here, right now. I, for one, am looking forward to this game because I think both the quarterbacks have an opportunity to play in the NFL one sooner rather than later. But also because I'm looking at this Colorado team and I see 
Shadour Sanders is a star. He went for 445, four TDs, in a win against North Dakota State, and he is one of just two players in FBS over the last 20 years to pass 400 yards and four TDs in each of his season openers back-to-back years. He's one, Patrick Mahomes is the other. Anytime that you are keeping company with Patrick Mahomes, I'm going to say you're doing pretty good. Another star they got is Travis Hunter, man. He's going both ways, and he wants to go play both ways in the NFL and not even prime to do that full-time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's you're going to have to pick one. And I think his heart is in playing wide receiver because he seems to just really love running down the field, catching that ball, going into the end zone. And he's cooking those North Dakota State defensive backs. I'm, I was sorry for them because they were left out on an island with this man in man-to-man coverage, and it was, it, it was man versus boy coverage. You know what I'm saying? He was going into that end zone anytime he wanted. And that's before we start talking about Jimmy Horn, who was running butt naked open through the middle of the field. At one point, I'm like, y'all got four blind men back there playing in the secondary? Y'all don't see number five running wide open, number 12 running wide open? But they saw something, and they got stopped quick, fast, in a hurry. So I am curious to find out which one of these dudes turns out to be the man as we get into this. But as much as I want to continue to talk about the football, it is the -the off-the-field part of the game that Coach Prime and Colorado have been succeeding in most. And we got the latest example of that, man. Prime get loot. Pr- 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 prime get loot, man. You know I'm saying, if you working with uh, with Prime, you gonna make some money. Like that's that's what it looks like to me, right? If you are one of these folks that are uh, in business with him, chances are the profits is up, the revenues is up, all the money around Prime is good money, okay? And we know this because his partnership with Blenders has yielded buku money. Blenders Eyewear has sold more than two hundred thousand pairs of Deion Sanders sunglasses. Sunglasses. I remember when these were going on sale for pre-order last year. They wanted $69 for them. I'm not paying $69 for no sunglasses, but I, you know what? Respect. You know what I'm saying? If you can get it, like, you can get it, then go get it. I, sh- I pay $10 for glasses. What do I look like paying $69 for sunglasses? Prescription sunglasses. It's got to be an arm and a leg over there, man. But you know what? That is what people wanted. Just like Shadour Sanders' jersey was the best-selling college football jersey of the last year. Same difference here, man. I'm looking at this, and I'm just saying, hey, look, uh, feels quite unlike we're going to be looking at Coach Prime going, how else do we get money here? You know, how much, how much, how, how else can we, can we make a little coin <laughs> with, with, with Coach Prime? Because the revenue from those sales is estimated to be more than $13 million, and that's just since they went on sale. Like, they ain't been on sale for a full year yet. That's, what, that's remarkable to me. Uh, my goodness, man. So we're talking about. After getting 5 million people to watch the game against North Dakota State, who knows how many people are going to watch this game on NBC against Nebraska. It's also Colt McCoy's broadcast debut. That Yeah, that Colt McCoy, he gets to call this game. But Blenders can't say enough nice things about Coach Prime. Just from last year, this is Chase Fisher, the company's founder and CEO. He said, we've sold over 200,000 pairs, and it's been a remarkable relationship. And you know what? The pre-order started to flood in. When Jay Norvell decided to say, I don't take, you know, I'm going to take my sunglasses and my hat off when I go talk to a, a kid's parents, and everybody else is like, well, I, I would much rather have the glasses that Coach Prime got on his face when he's talking to parents. Because they sold 70000 in pre-orders, my guys. Like, at, oh, excuse me, not 69 apart, $67 a pop. But you know what? Yesterday's price is not today's price. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Prime is certified. $79 is what, no, excuse me, $89 is what they charge it for the new line of Coach Prime Blenders. $20 more? Hey, man, if people are willing to pay it, you got to sell it to them for that. You know what I'm saying? Get it how you live. It's capitalism at its finest. I'm telling y'all. $13.4 million in revenue in 12 months. Goodness. And that is on top of uh, the fight club coming out of Colorado, apparently. I mean, Trevor Riley out here telling anybody that would listen that they'd be fighting over at Colorado. I'm like, eh, they'd be fighting in most college football places, dog. I don't – not really – you're not going to get a whole lot out of this with me. But, you know, Prime said it last year. Hey, look, I don't want to see nobody standing around watching no fights. If they fighting, we fighting. And it turns out that every time they want to throw some hands over there at Colorado, somebody got something to say about it. Now, that said – Bucky be filming most of everything out there, man. Like, it's, it's no telling what Bucky got on the floor that we ain't seen from well-off media at this point because the marketing engine that is Colorado is great. 
but that is one of the unforeseen, unintended consequences. When you're filming everything, everybody filming everything. You know, I, I'm I'm curious to find out if if this rises to the level of the university administration getting involved. And so far, it hasn't, and I don't know that it will, especially if they keep winning. And and there are those of y'all that believe that they will keep winning. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think the Nebraska team they're going to face is not the Nebraska team that they faced last year. Now, that said, the Nebraska team that they faced last year sacked Shadur Sanders seven times. Are they going to sack him seven times this time? I hope not. For Shadur's sake. I don't want to see that man continue to get hit the way he's been getting hit. He took 199 hits last year. He got sacked 50 times and got a vertebrae broken in his back so he couldn't play the last game of the season. We can't have none of that. You got to protect that man. But it you know, on the flip side, if you are Nebraska, what does a win for Dylan Riola do for you? Well, not a lot, really. Honest. I mean, look at it this way. From Nebraska's standpoint, from Dylan Riola's standpoint, Colorado is not a ranked opponent, okay? Colorado is not a conference opponent, even though it's a rival, but it's a rivalry that does not even have a nickname, so I don't know how much of a rivalry it is going to be when it doesn't have a nickname. It isn't a college football playoff contender, no matter how much Colorado fans want it to be. You go 4-8 and eight last year, we're not going to pick you to make the college football playoff. That's just not how that's work. That's not how it works. We still got, you still got to play football. You still got to win football games. And to make the college football playoff 12 team otherwise, you got to win at least 10 coming out of the Big 12, at least. You got one down, get nine more. Maybe this will be one. But if you are Dylan Riola, it's also a team that, well, we like watching. We like watching Colorado play football, so for his sake, it's going to be a lot of eyes on him. And for those that don't know that he is a five-star freshman phenomenon who is starting at Nebraska, the first true freshman to start at Nebraska in some time, that he had been committed to Ohio State and then Georgia and then flipped to his daddy's Nebraska where his uncle is the offensive line coach. You're going to learn all of that on NBC on Saturday night if you don't know it already. So in that way, a man that has – Quite a, little, uh, quite a lot of exposure in college football is going to get quite a lot more exposure to the wider world because people show up to watch Coach Prime's teams play. Now, on top of that, Prime is doing his part. He is one of the great marketers in the world today. It's like him, Taylor Swift, Ryan Reynolds. If they want you to know about something, you're going to know about it, okay? So you know that you have that, but the Prime that you're facing is not the Prime that was at Jackson State. Full stop. Now, you know, like he had a great saying about him playing baseball. It was, you know, when you play football, you get prime time. When you got baseball, you, you, you just got Dion. So far, so far, in power four of football, he's just been Dion. He ain't been Coach Prime. Coach Prime wins more games than he loses. As a matter of fact, it's an event when Coach Prime loses a football game, okay? That's what you're getting I think, against Nebraska until they prove otherwise. You know what I'm saying? Like, And if you're Riola, is it an important win for you? Sure, but it's as important as beating UTEP. Because, again, if you beat Colorado and you're Nebraska, you're supposed to beat Colorado for all the reasons that I've already told you about. If you do not beat Colorado, yeah, that's probably not going to be in your favor. You know what I'm saying? People still going to have something to say about you in front of this enormously large television audience for which we will be live right here on the number one college football show after the game because that's how we do. I'm just saying, if you are prime, you know what you have to do. And if you're a Riola, go do what you know how to do. And if you're in Nebraska, just tell that boy, don't throw the ball to the other team. Don't put the ball on the floor. We'll take care of the rest because that's all Nebraska is needed. Nebraska can run the football. Nebraska can play defense. I've yet to see Colorado run the football. And I'm not sure they can play defense. So we'll see. Right? We'll be right here. Uh, In the words of one other famous black man, I ain't hard to find. 